what we have represented on this worksheet are 26 different samples of 18 M&Ms taken from a production process one hour apart. We're seeking to answer a question something like this. We're the manager of a candy factory that has a contract to produce M&Ms and we need to ensure that the proportion of blue M&Ms is consistent with consumer expectations, which happens to be 24%. The production process must perform correctly and maintain the correct proportion. We want to ensure the production process is working correctly, and really, more precisely, we want to make sure that it's working consistently. In class, we took 18 small bag, small fun size bags of M&Ms and use those as our samples. So we're taking a little bit of liberty when we say that we took a sample an hour apart from the production process, but that's what we were trying to replicate. Each person of the 26 counted the number of blues. For us, these are called the successes because they have the attribute that we're looking for. For each of these samples, we want to count, calculate the sample proportion, which is simply the number of success, sample successes, or the blue M&Ms, divided by the sample size. The average of the sample proportions is what we'll call P bar. In this case, about 16.9%. Next, we want to calculate the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which is P bar times 1 minus P bar divided by the sample size, which is 18. Z is the number of standard deviations that we're going to set when we calculate control limits. Usually two or three are possibilities to use in practice. If we use two, it's going to give narrower control limits. We'll be more likely to pick up inconsistencies, but we may potentially have to investigate more inconsistencies where there's nothing wrong. Three will give wider control limits and we'll only investigate things when we're fairly certain that something in the process has changed. We'll use three for now. The center of the control chart will be P bar. The lower control limit will be the center minus the z-score times the standard deviation. At first we get a negative result here. So what we want to do is adjust this to zero by using the max function. The max function will adjust this formula to zero if the result is negative, but if the result is positive, then it will simply maintain the control limit formula. The upper control limit is the center plus z times the standard deviation. Once we've calculated these columns, we want to create the control chart. And we do that by highlighting the sample proportion, the center, the LCL, and the UCL. We insert a line chart in Excel, and we get one that looks like this. What we see here is that most of the points are within the control limits, although there is one touching the lower control limit at hour 18. This would be a point that we want to investigate. 
and see potentially why we didn't get any blue M&Ms in that sample. It could be that it's just a random occurrence, or it could be that there's something in the process that needs to be fixed or improved. If we go back to the data and change the Z, or number of standard deviations, to 2, we can see the effect on the control limits. In this case, we'd have a point outside the control limits. So if the manager set Z equals 2, he or she would want to investigate things fairly quickly when something looked inconsistent to see if there's anything in the process that needed to be fixed or improved. So the p-chart is a tool to monitor the M&N production process so that if there are things that happen in the process that need to be fixed or improved, we can detect them quickly. The other thing on our, in our data that we counted were the defects on the M&Ms. The defects can be anything that looks wrong with the M&M, and it's fairly subjective. So if we looked at a sample of 18, we could have zero defects. We could just have a couple. Maybe the paint on the M&Ms is chipped, the letter M is rubbed out, the M&M's broken, those would all be defects. We're not limited to the number of M&M's that we have when we count defects. We can have multiple defects per M&M, and that can add up to more than the total number in the sample. That didn't happen here necessarily, but here are the results for our defects. We're going to create a C control chart to monitor these defects. So we first calculate the average, or C-bar. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution is the square root of the average in this case. And we need to establish a Z-score. The formula is entered, but the lower control limit formula for the C-chart is the average minus z times the standard deviation, or sigma. We have to limit this again to zero because it appears that the result of this formula would have been negative. If that occurs, the max function simply adjusts it to zero. We can't have zero less than zero defects. The upper control limit is the average plus the z-score times the standard deviation. We highlight these four columns, click on Insert Line Chart, and create the C-chart. Now, when we look at the C-chart, we can see that the blue line, which are the sample defects, and the green line, which is the lower control limit, coincide. So there's many points on this chart where we had zero defects. These may, and that's a good thing, these may be points or hours in the day that we want to investigate to see why the production process worked with zero defects and whether or not there are things we can do on an ongoing basis to improve the project, uh, improve the process. We also see two points outside the upper control limit. These are unusually large numbers of defects and may point to places in the process that we need to look to make improvements.